I started farming in California in 1973. Uh, before that, uh, my grandfather was a sharecropper. My dad sharecropped, so I sharecropped with him my early, early age before we came to California. And I think probably of those 12 years, probably, uh, I think three of them we, we got off of sharecropping. You know, looking back on it, you know, I really didn't understand it, you know. They use the word sharecropping, but uh, I was told by my grandfather we were working on the halves, you know. We had to give the uh, owner of the land half of what we, uh, what we, what we uh, produce, which I didn't think was fair, you know, to me. Is we did all the work, and then we got to give half of it up. But then he explained that the man owned the land, so, you know, that kind of appeased me uh, somewhat. But then I figured, too, is that uh, we need to own our own land. Each and every one of us has a mission on this earth. And I found out, too, is when I bought this property that uh, there was something spiritual about uh, putting something that's dead in the ground and then watching it come to life. And then also too that it uh, provided uh, some systems for people who you know who, who need to, to eat the quality uh, uh, food. So I went from uh, you know from being an engineer with the uh, uh, at that time they called it the telephone company, but there's Pac Bell and then eventually AT and T. So I retired from them in 1994, and then I went into farming uh, full time. It's a day-to-day -day job, but you find out too that you know that there's uh, to me, I get pleasure out of it spiritually because, like I said, is that the stuff I grow is that I know it's of a benefit for some people. You know they enjoy it. I'm carrying out what, uh, what I believe is my mission. I mean I did the things that I want to as a as an engineer, and now I can t dedicate my time to say doing something to the community for the community, you know, and to help other people. I grow legacy crops. As you know, that there are certain uh, crops that uh, was indigenous to us as people, you know, as, as uh, people from the South, you know, like collard greens, uh, cabbage, okra. You know, those are some of the plants that uh, culturally, I guess, you can apply to us, is that we brought them over here. Our descendants brought it over. So, you know, and we find out too that those things that they're provide for you is what you need. You know, like uh, collard green greens, you know, they can tend to lower your cholesterol. Cabbage, you know, kind of uh, cleans you up a little bit, you know, and then naturally okra gives you the flavor you need for some of the food that you, you know, you consume. If I say farming today for the young people like that, they don't want to get into farming because of the, uh, the legacy of slavery. You know, enslaved, they worked for nothing, didn't get paid, uh, didn't get fair treatment. Also, but we know that, that this country was built on agriculture and the labor was provided by the, uh, my descendants. You know, but as far as uh, we're looking at equity today, is what, what equity do we get out of it? You know, it's been a, uh, a struggle, really. Uh, you notice that all the uh, land that we had before, especially after the Emancipation Proclamation was passed, uh, blacks owned a lot of land, you know, and you see over the years it was subsequently taken from them, you know. But we still, as a people, we still has a part to play into this food production. I mean, we like to eat, so therefore we should be at the table providing. But also, too, there should be equity, you know, and that's what we're looking for. If everything is uh, brought up and we make sure that there's no collateral damage to those people who are going to be affected, the least of us, then I think we'd be on the road to really making this country really united.